welcome you to this youtube video today we'll be dealing with uif and exchange rate this is a current exam question at the june examination of 2024 uh, i'm not sure about the province maybe it's the eastern cape so let's look at this question it says that mizwane a domestic worker works for four hours every saturday for mr jones who pay her 100 rand per day she also works six hours a day on a monday and wednesday for miss mbata at the rate of 20 rands per hour and b number one an employee who is employed for 24 hours or more per month must be registered by the employer for UIF. Number two, assume that there are four weeks in a month. Use the information above to answer the questions that follows. Question number one says that write out the acronym uif in full so uif in full we know this one is unemployment insurance fund unemployment insurance fund then we move to one point 1.2 state the minimum number of hours that an employee must work for to be registered for uif if you look at statement number one there it says that an an employee who is employed for 24 hours or more must be registered by the employer for uif so the answer here is 24 hours that is the minimum hours uh, the employee needs to work for him or her to be to qualify to be registered for the uif 1.1.3 show that Mr. Jones does not have to register Ms. Zwane for the UIF. You are going to determine this by the number of hours she works at Mr. Zwane. If the number of hours she works is less than 24, we're going to say that, yes, they don't have to register her for UIF. But if they are greater than 24 or more than 24 hours, we are going to say that, yes, they have to register this person for uif so mr zwane at mr jones we're gonna say number of hours if we look at mr jones here on the statement they're saying that she works four hours every saturday works four hours every saturday for mr jones so we know that it's four multiply by four saturdays four hours multiply by four saturdays because you are having she only works on saturdays and each and every saturday she works for four hours and we know that we are having four saturdays in a month so four multiply by four is 16 hours she works for 16 hours so because is 16 hours she they don't have to register her for the uif because 16 hours is less than 24 hours and a person need to work at least 24 hours to be registered for uif 1.1.4 miss butter state that miss zona uif contribution will be more than 10 rents verify if miss butter's statement is valid so now we are going to look at the number of hours she work. Number of 
I was where? At Mbata. Don't forget, she's working for two people, right? So now let's look. Number of hours she work at Mbata. So if we check at Mbata, she's working on Mondays and Wednesdays. We have Mondays and Wednesdays. And each day she works for what? For six hours. So we are going to say six hours of Monday plus six hours of Wednesday. All these things, we multiply them by four because we know that we are having four weeks in a month. So we're going to have 12 multiplied by four. So we know that 12 multiplied by four is equal to 48 hours. So Edmbata, she's working for 48 hours. And again, if we check Edmbata on the statement, they're saying that the, her rate is 20 rand per hour. So let's calculate how much she's earning per month. Income per month Income per month is going to be 48 hours multiplied by the rate of 20 rands. So we're going to have 48 multiplied by 20. The answer is 960 rands. 960 rand. Then from here, we have to calculate the UIF contribution. UIF contribution is going to be 1%. We know that uh, the employee contributes 1% and the employer also contributes 1%. Now they are saying that we should verify that uh, Ms. Zwane's contribution, not the total UIF, UIF contribution, but uh, for Ms. Zwane, cont uh, UIF contribution is going to be more than 10 rand. So we'll multiply this by 960. So 1 over 100 multiplied by 960, we know that it's going to be 960 cent. So looking at 960 cent, obviously we know that this is less than 10 rands. So we conclude to say that the statement is invalid. We'll move to the next question, 1.2. This is exchange rate. 1.2 is exchange rate. If we check here, they are saying that Ms. Zwane's brother, who works in England, sent her $500 for her birthday. The exchange rate given to us is one or oh, pound, I mean, 500 pounds. The exchange rate given to us is one pound is equal to uh, 24,0309 rands. So if you look at this exchange rate, we can tell that when you pay one pound, it's equivalent to paying how much? 24 rands. So it means that rands here is weak and pound here is strong. So don't forget that every time when you deal with exchange rate, the currency that which you pay less is the strongest one. The one that you pay more is the weakest one. So the first question here state, whether the rand or the pound is the strongest currency. I just said that to say that the currency that you pay less is the strongest. So in this case, we know that pound is the, is the strongest. Going to have pound is the strongest currency. Then we we'll move to 1.2.2. Calculate the amount in rands that Ms. Zwane will receive. So we have one pound this is the relationship that we have one pound is equal to 24 comma zero three zero two and then we check what is it that you are converting we are converting to pound and pound there why at our left hand side at the right right hand side you write x because that's what we are looking for we are looking for the rents we are given what 500 pound then the pound and the pound will cancel each other. 
now we're left with the cross multiplication here we just have to say 500 multiplied by 24 comma 0302 500 multiplied by 24 comma 0302 then our answer here is 12,000 12,000 and 15 rands comma 10 cent is equal to x so this is the amount that she's going to receive 12,000 and 15 rands and 10 cent if we convert 500 pound is equivalent to 12,000 and 15 rands and 10 cent so thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like the video don't forget to ask question on the comment section